Hi, Rena. Hello. How, good to hear, good to, to work with you today. Rena, we're talking about lip buzzes, tongue trills and humming. And we use these a lot in singing lessons. We use them as teachers. They're, they've been used for centuries of training singers and they're still used today. Um, they're still they're used across uh, uh, across uh, genres, and you have worked across a lot of genres, um, Rena. You're teaching across a lot of genres, and you've sung a lot of different pop, um, music theatre, a little less classical, but nonetheless, you've done some classic music theatre styles, which require that more upper voice. Um, and you've done some fantastic things in exams. You've, you've really um, hit some great results there, both at uni and with AMEB. So let's have a talk about how you now, as a teacher in Western Sydney, teach uh, and why you use lip buzzers, tongue trills and humming. Of course. So. Lip buzzers are probably one of my favourite um, exercises to use at the beginning of a lesson, um, just before we kind of get into the main warm ups and scales. Uh, because they're what we would call a semi occluded vocal tract exercise, um, that means some of the airflow stays in the mouth and some of the airflow or in the nose and other come and some of it comes out. It's still quite a close sound, so it's quite gentle on the vocal fo folds to begin with um rather than jump, jumping straight into a vowel sound like ah or all that requires just a little bit more precision and effort uh, to execute accurately so i really like using lip buzzers in maybe um, after we've done some breathing exercises i do some lip buzzers for about three to five minutes on a siren sound so basically just i told the student you know um, to start as low as they can and go as high as they can back down to a low sound. So it sounds a bit like an ambulance driving by. Um, and then once they've done the first one, I encourage them to extend it a bit. So maybe start even lower and go even higher. Uh, with some students, it's worth showing them how to extend it. Um, well, Rena, could you show us how you would do a lip buzz? Yeah. Do you want to start course. low and go up high? Yeah. So. Great. Good. Do you want to do one more of those? Yes. This time I'll go a little bit higher. Um. So Rena, tell us what that feels like and, and what you're looking for when you do that. So you might feel a bit of um, tingling above your upper lip, um, but you should kind of feel some vibrations happening in your nose and um, just in kind of the apple of your cheeks and a little bit around your mouth. It shouldn't feel strained. It should feel quite comfortable um in the voice if you feel like there's a scratchiness or a hoarseness or just just soreness really while you're doing it um that is unusual so stop it should feel comfortable mm. if a singer um, were feeling a little bit of say weight, weight in the sound or if it weren't as free and as flowing as yours is what do you think, what, what would you perhaps suggest? Are they, are they perhaps holding tight or is something not working? So if I would kind of try to listen to how they speak. Um, so if their spoken voice is quite in the back of their throat, just like right now, then encourage them to speak and bring the sound forward and, um, maybe it's got to do with their tongue maybe their tongue stuck back a, a bit towards the back of their mouth and they need to have, uh, bring it forward um, so those are a few things so speaking um, and trying to bring that placement in their speech to where it should be and then they can hopefully feel um, how that feels and apply it to that lip buzz um, the tongue is another just checking the position of the, of the tongue mm. um, 
The jaw too, the jaw can sometimes be in some people a little stiff and so you getting them to relax it a little bit. That takes a, a little bit of work, a little bit of focus. But that lovely free um, lip buzz that you did, um, did you notice whether any other parts of your body were um, working when you did that, Rena? Yes. Now, I am sitting down, so it's not working as much as it should. If I'm standing, I'll feel it a lot more. But um, I did feel when I took my breath in before I started, I made sure that I was setting up that space. So just like you would when you're breathing and you want to feel your lower belly muscles sort of inflate and you want to feel those ribs um, expand. That's how you want to start the lip buzz. Be well, before you even start the lip buzz, as you set up your breath, um, mm -hmm. you want to feel those muscles working. Um, then during it, you should kind of feel them come back into place, especially towards the end. Yeah. So when you start that lip buzz, could you feel a little bit of a connection in that low ab? It's sort of like the two, they're, you know, they're nanoseconds between them, but there's that connection with your low ab and then the, the sound flows and, yeah. Yes, So th the throat's nice and easy and open. And and even though you're sitting, you 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 know sitting with a bit of long length and looseness in your body. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Rena, um, when can you explain if you said before you go into an open vowel, you would use a lip buzz. But if an open vowel is difficult, do you ever go back? to lip buzzes to help a person feel the, the, the differences? Yeah, absolutely. So I find that um, when people are doing lip buzzes, generally they're not overthinking them. It's a very free and easy sound for them to do. And um, if they're doing it particularly, they, they don't realize, sorry, how high they're getting with the lip buzz or how low they're getting. But as soon as you go to an open vowel, um, students sometimes tend to overthink it, especially when they see it going higher or going lower than what they're expecting. They think that they can't do it, but they actually have just done it in a lip buzz. So if we're doing an exercise on Ma, for example, and a student is, you know, starting, their voice is starting to get strained or perhaps there's just a bit of tension because they're aware that they're getting quite high or getting low, I'll switch back to doing that scale on a buzz so that they can feel how freeing it feels and that they can do it. Um, and it's very helpful. And if you like, I can show you one um, <laughs> very quickly. Sure. So let's just see, maybe we'll do. So this one's a, actually, let me go a bit higher. Okay, so. If someone was struggling with getting that high, that was the D, um, then I would maybe say start it on a lip buzz. So. Um, and that can help mentally put them in the right headspace again of that, yes, they can do this, and B, kind of gently warm up get their voice into that higher pitch and yeah then... so lip buzzes are really encouraging and easy and and sort of really self-evident way of getting your voice moving mm -hmm. when you're teaching songs rena do you do you use lip buzzes uh when you're teaching a song and have you got an example of one yes so um actually today i did this uh so a student were learning a thousand, um, they're learning a thousand years and they were struggling with the part um, just before the chorus on one step closer in getting that pitch and I'll show it in a second of how you can do it in action. Um, and so we stopped doing it on the words and we switched back and going and doing it into a lip buzz. You could do it on a hum or a tongue trill as well, it just happens to be the preference that they wanted to do a lip buzz. Um, and so, yeah, we did it on a lip buzz first so that they could feel how comfortable and forward it should feel. Cause when they were doing it in their head voice, it was quite, the sound was stuck and it was quite backwards and not very open. Um, so we practiced doing it on a, t a lip buzz and bringing the sound forward. Then we did it on a hum. Then we opened the sound up to, ooh, 
and then we did it on the words and that just created more richness in the sound more openness and it just felt a lot easier for them to sing as well so you're going to give us a, a, a sample of that Rena? i will let me just play so it's okay there we go uh so we did it on a lip bus first so and then open to a hum so then then the words one step closer great Rena thanks when you heard her sing with a hum and with the words or with the open vowel it was very smooth and connected and that's what that song needs is that smooth connected feel so it goes up to that upper note but the lip buzz um rena just let's go back to that why do you think that helps the student get into that upper note i think, I think because it's semi occluded so because not all the air is coming out at once some of it is still stuck in the mouth and the nose it's a lot easier to sing than doing an mm. open vowel yeah and the words um, on that on that particular song the word clo is it can be a, a difficult shape yeah. for and difficult because you've got a cl cls are great sounds i might add to <laughs> to work on um but clo to get it up in that upper part it can be a little bit um a little bit uh, a bit cumbersome for some singers yeah. but for yourself Rena, when you're learning a song, and I know you're learning a particular song at the moment that's got quite a wide range in it, um, which you're going to tell us about, and you use a couple of different ways to get up the top and to get down the bottom of that. So let's talk about that song and, and what you do with that, please, Rena. Yeah, so uh, the song is Evergreen by Yebba. Um, in terms of the top half of that song, I pretty much do the same Thing as what I did with uh, a thousand years where I use a lip buzz um, for those higher notes that I struggle with however um, for the lower part of the song I actually prefer to use a hum because getting that transition between even though I'm singing the first verse in my chest voice but into the really lowest part of my voice from more of a middle part is quite tricky. And I find the hum is just an easier way to get that transition than doing a lip buzz. Um, so I'm happy to show a little bit of that. Um, sure. Can you, uh, have you got the things that the karaoke set up, Rena, yeah. or you're just gonna? I'll do it a cappella, but I'll just get the key. So I'm not Great. out of tune. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. So it's the the through it in. Um, yeah. What I are the words, Rena? Um, the words that so the that line is I kissed my penny and I threw it in and threw it in is where I'm really using the hum. Yeah. I also would slow it down. So that mm. was me doing it at the tempo, but to really just get more of, just feel more comfortable with that transition, I'd probably do it a bit slower. So, yeah. mm, and I like using my finger as a gesture to going forward, just so I know, even though I'm going down in pitch, just to keep that sound forward in my hum. Mm. Yeah, and it matches nicely with the idea of throwing the penny in mm -hmm. um, because that penny is going to drop into the water. So visually, the picture that the words and the music are making um, is the picture that you want to make with the tonal colour of your sound. So humming can really get that tonal colour matching the, the picture of what the song is about and the emotion of the song. Yeah. yeah. And then I might actually try singing it on the words now. So, I kissed my penny and I threw it in. And the it in. You could even just work on that after just those two words transitioning between them. Yeah. But I feel like the hum has really set me up 
for it so that it's not too jolty for me. It doesn't feel jolty in my voice and it doesn't sound as jolty. Yeah. Good. Well, let's talk about what you do to get up to the top because this is a song with a very wide range. Yeah. So with the top half, I do do the lip bars. Now, I hope it, hopefully Zoom won't cut out too much when I do it. Um, the other reason I do the lip bars for this top half of the song is it really helps me get that twang feeling. It kind of goes into a mixed belt, um, but in a very, very high part of my voice. So um, doing the lip bars helps me get that sensation that I need for twang um, more so than the hum. So let me just get that key. So that was it there, the main part. Um, I Brenna, can... try it again. See if you can get just that high part and see if you can flow it up to the top. So just, it could be Zoom, but it just um, is sometimes cutting out. So just have a little go at just getting it mm -hmm. um, to flow. Let me go back a bit. <laughs> Was that better? Yeah, so because it's quite a and you've got a register change there, but you want to try and keep it quite forward and bright and twangy mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, bring a little bit of that forward bright twang, which is going to be more of a, a belty sound. So can you sing it for us with a little, with have a sing? I don't know whether you want to do it with a, a vowel of your choice or do the words let's try the words see how we go um okay here we go so will you wait for me my evergreen and oh it's just as hard in heaven so will you Hopefully Zoom didn't go too crazy on the high note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. Um, well, look, um, Rena, I think we've probably covered quite a lot here. Um, just let's hear that last one again and see if you can, when you're doing the... Because you get a lovely forward resonance on that lip buzz. Let's just hear that last bit again and see if we can get that really forward resonance. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So will you wait for me, my evergreen? I know it's just as hard in heaven. So will you wait for me, my evergreen? I know it's Thanks, Rena, because it's a tough mix of sounds there um, of registers. So the as hard is quite in that lower middle voice and it's quite got a lot of twang, whereas the me just pings at the top. But it's a really important, important word because waiting for me is what the song is about, about this idea of waiting for someone um, uh, in heaven or in whatever whatever the song is, you know, the, the idea behind the song. So, yeah. And I would recommend to do this standing up. It will be a lot easier as well <laughs> rather than yeah. sitting down like I'm doing right now. Yes. Um, it will just help with opening up that space um, yeah. when you come to sing on the words. Yeah. Well, Rena, is there anything else that you want to tell us about? Um, learning about lip buzzers, tongue trills, learning about humming, using them in your own singing and using them in your in your teaching practice? I think um, it's important that lip buzzers, tongue trills, 
are quite difficult to start with when you're starting singing. So just persist. I think it's important to know one of the two. Um, for me, I prefer lip buzzes over tongue trills. I can do a tongue trill, but I struggle in getting that freedom in sound as I do with the lip buzz. So um, either or if a student should really learn to master one of them because it's a really, really helpful, um, gentle way to warm up the voice. And it's also a really helpful way um, to, you know, pitch some difficult or challenging parts in songs. Um, one tip I like to use if someone is struggling with the lip buzz is they grab their middle finger and their index, pop it, pop it on their dimples, push their cheeks up to help with the sound. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to add that. Yeah, I think it's important to learn one or the other or both ideally, um, but mm. it's okay if you have a preference for one because yeah, they're really, really helpful and very, very versatile. Yeah. And I might add, I think they're lots of fun. Yes, they are. They are. I always get a few giggles, especially from my younger students when we come time to do a lip buzz as a siren. Um, they, yes. they tend to find them amusing. <laughs> and I think, um, yeah, when you're a busy singer, they're fun to do and they're very easy and versatile. You can do them anywhere. And most people will not take a lot of notice of you. So yeah. you can just quietly sit out the back of a, s a stage or, or in your car on the way and you can do lip buzzes. And so they warm up your voice. Sure, you've got to have a bit of body underneath. A car seat can be a problem there. But if you're just walking around the house or you're just, you know, hanging or whatever, you can just get some lip buzzes going and it wakes up your voice. It says, hey, voice, let's do some singing. Yeah. And I think that's just fun and it just brings you into that singing mode and um, and, and you feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, 100%. So, well, let's, on that note, Rena, let's say, um, let's say goodbye for today mm -hmm. and we'll have another discussion another time about more to do with singing. Thanks for today, Rena. Thank you. Bye. Bye.